Hello, and welcome to the podcast, Down There. I'm your host, Laura McKaig. My mission is to educate, inspire, and empower others to discover that pelvic health and wellness is important, that it doesn't have to be embarrassing or intimidating, and that it can actually be fun to learn about. So let's have some fun learning today. On to the show. This episode of Down There is brought to you by Laura McKaig Physical Therapy, where we help men and women find real solutions to leakage, pain, or other problems down there. Let us help you regain your dignity, stay fit and active, and enjoy your family time, social life, and intimate relationships again. Find us at www.lauramckeggpt.com. Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Down There. I am so glad you're listening. My name is Laura McKeg, and I'm your host. I'm a physical therapist who specializes in pelvic health and pelvic floor therapy. I'm also a speaker and an educator. I love helping people discover that these problems are common, but not normal, and that they don't have to just live with it. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me over the years, Laura, how on earth did you get into this thing of pelvic PT? Well, that's what I'd like to talk about on this very first episode is kind of share my story of how I got back into the profession that I had left for a while and um, how I discovered pelvic floor physical therapy and why I love it so much. So here we go. Um, If you do hear some strange noises during the episode, it's probably my son next door He was playing video games, and I'm in the room next to him. So anyway, we shall see. Anyway, how did this all start? It all started with a trainer and a foam roller. What? Well, here, let me give you a little background first. I was in pretty bad shape. Oh, about five years ago, six years ago. Our family had moved overseas in the year 2000. Uh, We started a second career, and I decided to let my physical therapy license lapse. I really never thought I'd pick it back up again. Now, fast forward about 13 years, we've moved back to the United States. I left my job in communications, And I was working in a job that I really loved, but it just did not pay much at all. And that built a lot of financial stress. That was really, really stressful. Add to that, that the lifestyle changes coming back to the United States led to a lot more of a sedentary life. So I wasn't as active. I wasn't walking as much. And you guessed it, the weight started coming back on. Um, Actually, exercise and self-care fell to the bottom of my to-do list because I was just, I was just surviving. I wasn't even thriving. I was just trying to figure out how to adjust a life back here in the U.S. And that was really hard. I was stressed, I was tired, and I was hurting. And then I injured myself. About a week before we were going to move, I injured my right SI joint or sacroiliac joint in the back of my right hip. And besides that, my knees kept hurting going up and down stairs. So that vicious cycle continued and got worse. I couldn't bend over to unload the dishwasher. I couldn't go up and down stairs without pain. It was hard to walk, sit down, or stand up 
and it started to affect my job. And I was only in my late 40s. Truth be told, I was in the same vicious cycle as many of my former physical therapy patients. And I was shocked and embarrassed that I had let that happen to me. And I I remember thinking, I'm too young to be feeling like this. So I decided to do something about it. I joined a gym. Now, I joined this gym with the sole intention of losing 10 pounds, getting kick-started into a fitness routine, then I can take it from there. It was only supposed to last six months. After all, I was a physical therapist. I knew how to get myself back into shape. I didn't need anyone's help, right? Wrong. Oh, I was so wrong. Well, I decided to purchase the Trainer 3-Pack. You know, you get three sessions with a personal trainer to start your membership. I did that. It was January. Yes, I was one of those. Join the gym in January, people. Three sessions, that's all. Then I'm done. Wrong again. I showed up the day of my appointment to this scary, big, intimidating weight room area to meet my personal trainer. Little did I know that what life changes and surprises were in store for me after that. But I remember thinking, as we were talking, as he was talking to me about my first session, do I tell him? I knew the subject would come up eventually. I struggled to politely listen to this trainer as we began the fitness assessment. Truth be told, I wasn't sure I wanted to do this, but I had made a commitment and I was determined to follow through. I was not going to be one of those drop out of the gym in February people, but I knew I'm going to have to tell him. So then came the occupation and fitness history part of the assessment. I was kind of dreading that. I paused. Then I sheepishly admitted that I was a physical therapist, but I hadn't been practicing for some time. I mean, really, isn't it obvious just by looking at me? I was there because I injured my SI joint and because my knees hurt. Now, I was fully expecting either a little bit of a rolled eyes, a judgmental look, Maybe a condescending reply or worse. It never came. Actually, quite the opposite happened. Instead, I suddenly found myself in a lengthy, highly intellectual conversation about the structure and biomechanics of the sacroiliac joint. And I thought, huh, wow. I've forgotten how much I like talking about this stuff. Then... He brought out the foam roller and told me about that, and I got so excited. Okay, I know that sounds weird. Why get all jazzed up over a simple foam roller? Well, I'll tell you why. Back when I started treating patients a long time ago, we didn't have foam rollers. You couldn't self-treat like that. How cool to be able to do this yourself. I felt like I had struck gold. And I'm sure this guy thought I was very strange indeed. And then a spark lit inside me that I thought was dead. You know, that fascination with anatomy and the movement of the human body and also the desire to help people who are hurting. I also realized how terribly out of shape I really was. And it scared the heck out of me. I clearly needed more help and guidance than I thought. Well, this guy seems to know what he's doing. I guess I'll stick with it for a while longer. 
So I continued training and learning. And then I started to lose those 10 pounds. I started to get stronger. I was more confident. I had more energy and my pain went away. I was amazed. And then I did something stupid. Oh, yes, I overtrained. I tried something I shouldn't have. And I injured my shoulder. So guess what? I ended up in physical therapy with one of my former co-workers as my therapist. And so during one session, he just asked me at point blank, Laura, why haven't you gotten your PT license back? You know, a lot of people had asked me that over the years, and I gave him the same answer. It's too much work. I don't want to make up all those years of continuing education courses, blah, blah, blah. But he's very persistent. And he kept telling me I really should look into it, but I still had a lot to offer the profession. You know, this time, I couldn't stop thinking about it all day long. So I made a phone call. I called the Board of Healing Arts, and I found out that it was possible to get my license reinstated. All I had to do was retake the physical therapy board exam. Oh, oh, is that all? Are you kidding me? Call it a gut feeling? Call it divine intervention? I call it God redirecting my life in a very crystal clear way. Wanting me to return to physical therapy. Surprise! God, you want me to do what? Do you know how old I am? Well, of course he knows how old I am. But seriously, I'm almost 50. Really? Well, I thought about it, prayed about it, discussed it with my family, and then I decided to go for it. It just seemed absolutely crazy. How was I going to accomplish this? I had no idea where, even, even where to start. But I was 100% convinced that this is something I was supposed to do. Have you heard the saying, God is in the details? Well, I believe that. He worked out every detail in ways that, that just amazed me. I had the summer off from my job at the school, which gave me the time to study. And I found an online mastermind course that taught me how and what to study for the exam. And study I did. I went to the gym and I practically lived there. They had study tables there and I spent hours every day there studying, learning, working out, building relationships. My personal trainer, who I continued to work with, was not only an excellent trainer, he's a gifted teacher as well. Training sessions became very challenging but fun, usually fun, studies of movement patterns, kinesiology, physics, etc. He became my study coach, and I needed a study coach. I learned the why behind what I was doing. And that was really crucial in understanding the exam material and passing this test. And the other trainers, as well as the staff at the gym, well, they became my tribe. They were my support group, my encouragers. And they spent hours of their own time sharing their areas of expertise. Baseball injuries, bodybuilding, diabetes management, and much more. I could not have done it without them. So, if you're a fitness professional and you're listening to this right now, I just want to personally thank you for what you do. You never know the impact that you may have on someone's life. 
I know it certainly made a difference in mine. Another thing that was really, really helpful were the study buddies that I had. Uh, Friends who would lend a listening ear as I processed this journey verbally. And some of you know how much I like to talk, so I process a lot verbally. They listened a lot. It was great. And then I had friends who were also healthcare workers, and they would help me with what I call specialty topics. Now, one of these study times really stands out in my mind. I was with a former PT, physical therapy colleague, and we were studying the sacroiliac joint. Now, that's the same joint that brought me to the gym in the first place, and it's a really complicated part of the body. So we're studying, and all of a sudden, in the middle of our session, She said what seemed to be a very random thing. She said, Laura, I think you'd be a really good pelvic floor therapist. And I said, what's a pelvic floor therapist? I had no idea what a pelvic floor therapist was or what they did. It wasn't something I ever learned about in PT school. Well, she told me what she understood about pelvic floor therapy. And my first thought was, wow, that's really weird. And you might have the same thought. That sounds pretty weird. I don't know anything about it. Well, that's okay. My second question to her was, why do you think that? Why me? And she replied, because you're very skilled and you can handle the sensitive nature of this in a very professional and confidential manner. Not everyone is able to do that. Once again, a spark was lit. I am really grateful for that random comment she made. So I continued my studies to pass the test. Gosh, there was so much to review. You know, pelvic floor was not a big topic for the exam. Maybe, maybe only one to two questions in all. But I found myself more and more interested in learning about it. Well, thank you so much for listening to the show. Go ahead and drop in a comment. Let us know how you liked this last episode. I'd love to hear from you. Do you have any questions or do you want to learn more about us? Perhaps you're ready to take the next step. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Laura McKaig PT or visit our website at www.lauramckaigpt.com to learn even more.